Good morning and welcome to Act Sunday. My name is Anna Lineback and I'm a freshman at Shasta View Academy. We're all so glad you could be with us this morning. So before we continue our worship, I would like to share a little of what Act Sunday is about. So for those of you who don't know what Act Sunday is, basically once a year, us high school students have the opportunity to put on a Sunday service. We are in charge of everything from working the slides in media to preaching. It is really just an amazing experience for us high schoolers and a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to the church. So with that, I would like to pray for our morning together. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day you've given us, and I thank you for the opportunity to come together as a church and worship and praise you. I also thank you for the Acts Youth Ministry and the students and leaders involved that have put their time in preparing our Acts Sunday service. I pray for more opportunities for you to use us to be a blessing to the church body and community. And I also pray for JP as he gives the message this morning that you would give him wisdom and clarity and that you would just speak through him so that the message can reach our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand or fall on you Cause Jesus, you're my hope and stay And when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus, you're my hope Turn to heaven 
Good morning. My name is Emma Hawkins. I'm 15 years old and I'm a sophomore at Foothill High School. Today, I'm going to be sharing my testimony on how God worked in my life. As a younger aged kid, I grew up in San Luis Obispo with Christian parents. I've always been told about God and have always known that he was there for me, but it wasn't until COVID hit that I realized how much more there is to God and how much I desperately needed him. As many of you know, COVID was a rough time for most people. And being in sixth grade at the time, my world revolved around school, church, and the Awana program. Personally, I am a person who hates change. And COVID ended up changing my life and impacting my security in my school and church routine. COVID separated me from friends whom I had known for six years, took me away from church where I felt safe, and ruined the source of comfort I got from six years of the same routine, most of which involved school. What ended up stressing me out more was when we decided to move up north to the Reading area, taking me away from everything I had known and relied upon. I then realized I wasn't as close to God as I wanted to be, and I soon found myself starting to become more irritated at myself and at God. The selfish parts of me questioned his goodness. If God really loves me, why would he do this? Or, this is all God's fault. Sometimes, I'd even question if he still loved me. But moving up here to Reading turned out to be a major blessing in disguise. Sure, I lost the friends I had grown up with down south, which was sad, but I have been given an amazing opportunity to grow and to get to know more people and expand my social skills. I moved from a neighborhood where the houses were on no land to a property where we have two acres and a fair amount of animals. I have always been horse crazy and have always had a special place in my heart for animals. Moving up here to Reading, I have been given an amazing opportunity to work with animals, especially horses at our lo a local ranch called Trailhead Youth Ranch, where I get to work with a team of other wranglers around my age to teach younger kids about God and proper horse care. I have gone from knowing about God to growing a more intimate and close relationship with him. Even though COVID changed my life, Looking back, it was positively influencing my long-term relationship with God. God uses the hard times to help us grow in ways we never imagined. Sometimes God uses bad events in our lives so we can see the good, even through the dark. If our lives were only happy and good, we would soon become filled with discontent because nothing ever changed, and we wouldn't seek a relationship with God as a cause of that. So when God gives us a chance to write a new story in our lives, I strongly encourage you to take advantage of it because you never know where you can and will end up. One of my favorite verses that helped get me through my journey is Genesis 50, 20 through 21. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Now, therefore, don't be afraid. I will provide for you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Emmy. I'm a sophomore at Shasta High School, and this is my sister Karis. We're going to be singing. Yeah. 
Good morning, Neighborhood Church. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. My name is Sarah Gregory, and I'm a freshman at Shasta Charter Academy. Starting today, Brad Manley will be leading a Sunday school series called The Urban Legends of Theology. He will be dismantling the misconceptions about what the Bible teaches. On Wednesday, April 17th at noon, there's going to be our Harvester's Potluck for our elders 55 and up. This is a great chance to get together and praise and worship God. We will be starting a new sermon series next week from the book of Daniel. This series will teach us about living faithfully to a faithful God in a broken world. And as you can see, on Saturday, April 27th at 10 a.m., our church is getting together for a prayer walk at Turtle Bay. There will be prayer mats and places to stop with topics and suggestions about how to pray for our community and church. We'll also be having a picnic lunch afterwards, so don't forget to bring some food. We have a great opportunity to serve the church coming up through our annual church workday. If you show up here on Saturday, May 4th, there will be lots of jobs for people of all ages to do. The workday starts at 8 a.m. and should end about noon. Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Gregory, and I'm a junior at Shasta Charter Academy. Every week, we invite our children's church kids up here, and we pray for them and their teachers before they head off to their classes. Parents, you are more than welcome to follow your kids out and see where they are going and meet their children, their teachers, sorry. <laughs> Could all the kids ages four through fifth grade come up here, please? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and all the kids that get to come and hear about you today. Please give them all willing hearts to learn and give the teachers patience and joy as they spread your word. Please fill the children and their teachers with a wonderful sense of your presence. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, please take some time to greet each other this morning. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Hello, my name is Shiloh. I am a freshman at Shasta Charter Academy. I'll be reading you Romans 10, 5 through 13. Please stand. For Moses... For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? What That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend to the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in, believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you. You may be seated. Almost forgot to turn that on. That wouldn't be great. Good morning, everybody. It is still morning. Um, before we begin, I'd like to start in prayer. So if you all bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity, again, to preach before this wonderful crowd. Um, I pray that you would open their hearts and their ears to receive this message that you have prepped, Lord, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, hi guys, my name is JP, I'm a senior at West Valley, I am super stoked to be up here giving the X special. Um, God put it in my heart to share that our salvation is received through faith in Jesus, and not in our own works. So today, the passage that I want to share with you is Romans chapter 10, 5 through 13. In the book of Romans, Paul writes to the church of Rome, which at the time was newly founded, about the gospel message. That's pretty much the entire book of Romans. It's the whole gospel message being explained to this new church in a pre-written sermon in one book. The Jews saw the law as commands given by God that, if followed, would result in blessings. One of these blessings is righteousness. Like many, in the time this was written, and even today, they had misunderstood the gospel and believed that righteousness is based off of their merit and their works, rather than trusting in Jesus' ability to deliver them and cleanse them of their sins. Keep in mind, we often fall into this line of thought too. It is not just a belief that died in the past, but because of the sin in our lives, righteousness is impossible to attain by our own merit. It has always been faith. And the response towards God with faith, repentance, and obedience Paul writes to the Roman church in Romans 10 about a different way to receive righteousness. By contrasting salvation through faith and salvation through works, he points to how salvation is received through Christ Jesus and his work and merit. And we receive his righteousness through faith in his life, death, and resurrection as we believe and ask him for forgiveness of our sins. And the reason we must believe in Jesus and trust him for our own salvation is because works-based faith always falls short. Paul starts talking about this issue in verses 5 through 8, which says, For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But 
the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. This is where Paul really starts to address the misunderstanding of the gospel, which is the idea of a works-based faith that they were wrestling with. The Jewish Christians, because of their past understanding of how God distributed blessings because of the law, might have struggled with understanding how the gospel worked in their lives. In verse 5, Paul shares that Moses did write about righteousness that was obtained obtainable if the command in the law were followed perfectly. But as we know, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have fallen short and sinned before the glory of God. The people who Paul was writing to, while they confessed to believers, might still be holding on to those ideologies of needing to work their way to righteousness through following the law. Even today, we sometimes fall into this mindset and think that we must earn God's love, grace, and his salvation. This makes me think of how the world, world works on a daily basis, like in my dad's job. See, my dad is an IT analyst. He works for Marin. In short, he's a guy who fixes computers. He must be super qualified to hold his position. If he does well, he gets blessed with good rewards, and if he does not do well, he's fired. We're used to working for these benefits, these paychecks, and these salaries, which we all consider good and necessary things because nothing in life is free. Everything has a cost. This in combination with having the mindset of trusting our own works to receive salvation, we will always fall short of God's glory and his standards. Having faith in yourself or your works to receive righteousness will always fail. Luckily, Paul doesn't stop there. He tells us in verses 6 through 8 that we do not need to search for the way to righteousness because the way to righteousness has already come in the person of Jesus, who is the Christ and is the Messiah. They had long been waiting for him. Paul then goes on to explain in the next verses that salvation is obtained through believing in Jesus. Let's look at verses 9 through 11. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. In these verses, Paul gives the basics of the gospel message, which is the good news about Jesus which we all need to remind ourselves of sometimes, is that Jesus lived on earth, lived a perfect, sinless life, died an undeserving death to pay the price of sin, was buried, and then raised three days later. This is the good news of the gospel and the hope that we have in Jesus according to verse 9, which says that if we believe in our hearts and confess that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. We too, like the people of the Roman church Paul wrote to, can easily forget this message, whether it is in the form of trying to earn our salvation or we are trying to achieve a great goal, one that could waste our precious time that we have. This gospel is about believing in our hearts that Jesus is Lord and trusting in his righteousness that he places on those who believe for salvation. I would like to take a minute and explore the faith of our hearts. It is written in Jeremiah 17.9 and Mark 7.21 that the heart can be deceitful, malicious, sinful, and evil. But Jesus shows that us that without heart, we cannot call upon him to save us. We cannot trust him to save us. And Paul makes it clear in verse 10 when he says, for with the heart one believes and is justified. Which leads us back to faith. Not a superficial faith. That is folly. What good is it to say something and not mean it, or do something out of necessity rather than because you believe it? An example. 
Earlier this year, I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be able to do something that would be impactful or what would let me be able to help people. I saw the benefits of being a firefighter and wanted to share them with others and those who I would love. Over time, I realized that firefighting was not for me. And I was continuing in the program out of necessity rather than truly believing and desiring in my heart that I wanted to be a firefighter. Soon, though, God would show me that he had other plans. Although I will still finish my fire class, my heart was never set on it. I was going through the motions. There was no heart in what I was doing. Sure, it's fun, but it's not the right fit because there's no heart, which is where our faith should come from. This faith or belief that Paul talks about is not just going through the motions. It's not going to church twice a year and saying, I have faith in Jesus. Paul writes that someone must believe in their hearts and confess that Jesus is Lord. That belief must be from the heart and a faith that is genuinely, that is genuine in the person and works of Jesus Christ. It is having a true faith based on God who has revealed himself to us and gives undeserving grace and the free gift of salvation if we believe. You see, without the heart, there is no believing. Without the heart, we cannot fulfill God's most important commandment, love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, as written in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. This good news about Jesus and how to receive salvation through faith in him is something the entire world needs to hear about. But Paul doesn't stop there. It gets better because Paul then goes on to explain in the next few verses that the free gift of salvation is available for all who believe. Let's read Romans 12 through 13. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What Paul reveals about this free gift of salvation is that it is received through the belief in Jesus and it is available to anyone who believes in him. If we look back to the beginning of this sermon, we talked about how the Jews were given the law by God through Moses. This law was given exclusively to the Jews. But salvation through Jesus is available to anyone who believes, whether they are, as Paul says, Jew or Greek, or in some translations, Gentile, which is the rest of the world. There is no distinction. So God, because he loves us, graciously gave us his son to die for our sins, to rise from the dead, defeating death, and sparing us from his eternal judgment, giving us mercy and his salvation to those who do not deserve it for everyone who believes. In short, this salvation is all for all who believe. There is not really any room for debate. Here's an example of why. When Jesus was up on the cross and the second criminal, criminal said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus did not say, nah, you're not good enough. He said, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. For reference, that's in Luke chapter 23, verses 40 through 43. Even as Jesus gave his life, he shows us that salvation is for all who call upon the name of the Lord. This is why earlier I mentioned the good news of the gospel and how it needs to be told to every person on the planet. Everyone needs to hear who Jesus is what he did for them, and how believing in him could trust drastically change their lives. This was true, true for those who saw Jesus with his own eyes when he walked on this earth, and this is true for us today as he is alive in heaven waiting for his time to return. Even if we cannot see him, he is near to our hearts and our mouths, and he is with us in every moment. This promise that he made to the criminal 2,000 years ago even stands true for us to this day. Some of us struggle with this idea. 
We struggle with trying to earn salvation. And some of us struggle with the belief that we do not deserve salvation, even if we believe. I know I did once. His free gift of salvation that Jesus paid for with his death and is realized with his resurrection is available to all who believe in their hearts that he is Lord. As we end today, I would like to encourage you that if you never placed your trust in Jesus for your salvation, that you do so. Remember that relying on your own works or obedience to God will always fall short because we are trusting in ourselves rather than looking for salvation and righteousness through believing and trusting in Jesus. It does not matter if you're young or old, male or female, American or Canadian, Jesus gives that free gift of salvation to you if you believe. And for those of us who have already put our faith in Jesus, I encourage you to hold fast to the gospel and remember what Jesus has done for you. Be bold in sharing this message with the world. And for all of us, remember that our salvation comes by faith in Jesus and not our own works. Let's close in prayer. Dear God in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to serve your greater purpose. Thank you for bringing all these people who wanted to hear this message. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us and forgive us for our sins. Thank you for sending your son to lift this burden of sin and shame off our hearts. Lord, I pray that if anyone in the audience has, who has not accepted this offer of your free gift, that they may take it to their hearts, that if willing, they will see the wrong in their ways and turn to you for your gift of salvation. In relationship with you, Lord, I pray that as we go home, we may keep this lesson and this gospel message in our hearts and in our minds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. My name is Jackson Winkleman. I am a sophomore at Shasta Chartered Academy, and today I have the joy of leading you all in communion. In JP's message, he talked about the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. It is also important to remember that Jesus died for all people, no matter who you are or what you've done. Communion is a wonderful way to remind ourselves of what Jesus sacrificed for us. It is a reminder that Jesus died on the cross, taking the punishment for our sins, and rose again on the third day. It is a reminder that Jesus shed his body and his blood so that we might be able to have a personal relationship with him, trust in him and him alone for your sins, and live eternity with him in heaven. Communion is also a time of reflection. It is a time to recenter our hearts and mind on God and reflect on what he is doing in you. If you are a believer and are feeling weighed down by the things of the world or feel disconnected from Jesus, I invite you to just take time and reflect on him and recenter your hearts on him. Reflect on whether you have been relying on your own works or if you are relying on God. In a minute, I will invite you to go to one of the tables in the corners of the room and take the cups of bread and juice. I would also like to remind everyone that communion is for those who have given themselves to God. So if you have not yet put your faith in Jesus for your sins, I invite you to take this time to observe and to reflect on what Jesus did on the cross. Even better, if you would like to make the decision to give your life to Christ right now, that would be amazing. You can admit your sin and trust in Jesus for your salvation, and then you can join with the fellow believers in this room in communion. As the music plays, I invite you to go take your cups and find your seats.
like to remind you all that when we partake in communion, we will start with the bread and then take the juice. Luke 22 says, And he, Jesus, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat. It continues to say, And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Let's drink together. Would you join me in prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this day and this time that we can come, and thank you for your grace and mercy and forgiveness that you have shown us, even though we do not deserve it because of our own rejections of you. We thank you that we have this opportunity to reflect on you and what you have done and continue to do. We pray that as we go out today, you show you can show your love through us, that we are able to go out and show your truth to the world, that others might find you and your truth through the way we live our lives. Thank you for everything you have done and continue to do. In your name we pray, amen. I want to introduce the media booth. These are the people running slides, sound, and live stream. Ryan McFarland, Gideon Gable, and Jaden Russell. Could all the ACT students please come up and join me? My name is Ella Walker and I am a sophomore at West Valley. I want to introduce to you our ACT youth staff members. These are the people who lead, teach, and invest in the students of our group every week and are your main contacts if you want to learn more about our, about our Axe High School program. I would like to start with Jeremy and his wife, Christy. <laughs> Justine Wildauer. <laughs> Nicole Wildauer. Nathan Warner and his wife, Kaylee. Sarah Bennett. Skylar Bainbridge, who isn't here today, but he says hello. And lastly, our youth pastor, Noah Haddon, and his wife, Nikki. And baby Athena. Please join us as we sing the last song together.
Hi there. Uh, I'm Russell. I will be uh, concluding our service today with a prayer. So let's uh, bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for the message that uh, we have received today. And thank you for this opportunity as the youth group to get to lead today's church service. And please bless our lives and keep us safe. We thank you for your unlimited mercy and grace and that we receive from you every day. Thank you for your free gift of salvation, Lord, that you uh, give us through your son, Jesus. And thank you for everything that you do. Amen. Well, that concludes our uh, service. Um, there will be a prayer group over there if you need it. So go see them. You're dismissed.